Hello again Du, ich möchte dich heute noch sehen Ich will dir gegenüberstehen Viel zu lang Jetzt ist für viele die Zeit, den Impfschutz aufzufrischen. Zum Beispiel für Menschen über 60, Vorerkrankte und Menschen in Gesundheitsberufen. Auch für Sie lassen Sie sich von Ihrer Ärztin oder Ihrem Arzt beraten. Informationen des Bundesministeriums für Gesundheit unter corona-schutzimpfung.de sitting like I sit <laughs> on the couch cozy still winter with a hot coffee I love coffee by the way <laughs> it always has to be coffee I know tea would be much better but I like my coffee today <laughs> I was thinking about what do I want to share with you I know that many of you wrote to me and told me that you're very interested in the near-death experience and asked me to speak about that. Um, yeah, which, which I'm going to do today. <sighs> I'm going to be breathing deeply in between because yesterday has been the day. You know these, these Facebook memories where they say, well, this has happened um, two years ago or one year ago or seven years ago yesterday I had um, a posting that said this day two years ago I came back from hospital was back home with my dog sitting in the bed and I remember that not much worked I remember I couldn't get up properly um, my friend had picked me up from hospital and brought me home And um, I was sitting at home, I could hardly get up to go to the toilet. I think, and when I think back, they probably let me go too early. But it's been three weeks, and if you have ever spent three weeks at a hospital, you know you just want to go home and you just want to sleep in your own bed and heal <laughs> in your usual surrounding. Um, yeah. So I went home on 15th of February. Yep. After <laughs> my kidneys had failed, my liver had failed, and my heart had failed uh, three weeks earlier. Um, until this day, well, I have um, a diagnosis now. It's called Evans syndrome, and it's a very rare autoimmune disease. About one in a million people develop it. And I say develop because autoimmune for me is always me fighting against myself. Um, if you know this podcast already or um, if you want to uh, stay with me and <laughs> get to know me better through the next weeks, months, years, then you will know that um, for me, sickness always starts in your head. Without your mind, nothing in your body would work. So uh, dead corpses don't move. There's nothing going on. So everything that is happening in your body is actually only the reflection from things going on in your mind. And... Um, Well, I was definitely fighting myself during those years or before that. I had been um, very active in animal rescue in Romania, um, which is a country where so, 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 so many stray dogs live. And um, I had adopted my first dog uh, from Romania in 2013. And from then on, I had always helped. Over there, I had spent... Um, my 
weeks off my holidays whenever we had like four days off I would fly to Romania and go help um, I built my own NGO he built up a team it was actually quite successful um, and got very big very quick <laughs> and as as the CEO of an NGO you're always the one that will always cross your own boundaries you will not notice how much stress you have. You will always tell yourself that if you don't do it yourself, it's not going to be done, so you have to do it. And you will just give up everything for the greater cause. And this saving the world, <laughs> rescuing lives, I just absolutely got tangled up in it and lost myself in this. Um, the outcome of that was that... After a few years, um, we had about a hundred adoptions, sometimes more every month. So we would collect the dogs there, find out if they were chipped uh, in Europe. Yeah, every dog has to have a chip and a rabies vaccination, so they can be registered. And stray dogs usually don't have. So we chipped them, we vaccinated them, we would catch them and bring them into one of our shelters which we had seven <laughs> off in total with more than, well, it, at any time it was more than 1,400 dogs. So yeah, we were quite, <laughs> can you hear that, that <laughs> the pause around me? My dogs are moving whenever I record podcasts. I don't know why. Do you want to come up? Come on up. <laughs> Loki says no. I just want to listen. <laughs> Tell me again the story of how you rescued all those doggies. Yep. Well, actually, my dogs were the ones suffering most because uh, in those times um, I was living or I had just bought my own house. Uh, it's more in a form of farm from 1853, so very old. But um, I could move in. It was all done and renewed the years before I bought it. Uh, I was very lucky to find it. Well, apparently I manifested it. <laughs> um I moved in and from then on um, I would always take those dogs to me that nobody else wanted. Like people would order dogs from pictures from the internet, from my descriptions, from my pictures that I had posted from my visits there and um, they would order them or adopt them. But I say order because I really want want you to understand how people deal with this because it's something that really freaked me out and made me so, 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 so angry that I really learned how to hate people and their behavior and their recklessness. So they would order a dog. The dog came and no matter how much you told them what stray dogs are and what they are not, and how no matter how how many papers they would sign that we don't guarantee anything that the dog could be anything that we offer dog training for them if they need blah 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 with uh 10% of every transfer um every dog uh 10 10 would want to get rid of their dog <laughs> and well there were always i don't know we called them SOS fosters where these dogs could go, but all those dogs that could not go anywhere, I had to take them. And I did. I have a lot of space around here, that's not the problem, but imagine me with my own four dogs, <laughs> plus five, six foster dogs. That was quite a thing. And remember, I was a teacher, so <laughs> I was working full time. Um, so yeah, that that was too much. It's been too much uh, for a long, 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 long time. I write about this in my book as well. Um, it's still being translated by myself, surprise. And that's going to take a while, but you can read the whole story in there if you want to. I just want to... I'm just mentioning it so you can understand what what I had become. I had become a person that was so angry with people who would just say, yeah, I want to help, and then... <laughs> Uh, in the end, I was the stupid one. They blamed me for everything. Every flaw, every mistake a dog would have would be my... Uh, it's my fault in the end. would always be my fault. 
and I took it and lost faith in humanity and that's for me a very toxic way to go. So I suppressed my anger because where can you put it? <laughs> Not on the dogs. Um, and yeah, in 2016 my liver failed twice. Um, that wasn't... <laughs> well, that's not good, of course, but that's something like you get antibiotics, you go home and you say, well, don't know what that was, but maybe, maybe it was, I don't know. <laughs> it happened by accident. I don't know what I said to myself, but yeah. Nothing happened in 2017 except we expanded a lot with this NGO. And in 2018, yeah, it was 18, in January um, 2018, um, I got infected with gastroenteritis. And I don't know, of course, I mean, I puked, <laughs> which you do when you get that virus. And it wouldn't get better um for two days i slept almost the whole time and at some point my friend came in and said well, she had been walking my dogs in these days and she came in looked at me and said um you're all yellow <laughs> and i said oh really i haven't looked into the mirror for days <laughs> i was all yellow and uh, so something clearly was wrong and i also had um, these small red dots and under my skin um, so she called the ambulance they would pick me up and I don't remember so much I remember um, that I got to the ER and they would um, from this small hospital here. It was not the, the, the big clinic. It was a small hospital. And um, I remember that they did their checkups and told me that my kidneys had failed. And, of course, my liver had failed. That's why I was yellow. And they said, well, I don't know if you noticed, but you have about 10 liters of water in your body because your kidneys are not working for at least a day. I was like, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I've been drinking tea so much because that's what you do when you're sick, right? You need to hydrate. <laughs> um, and because I was puking all the time, I, I didn't realize that I didn't have to pee. So, yeah, didn't realize my kidneys were not working. And um, the small um, red spots under my skin was blood because my platelets had been destroyed and the blood was uh, flooding, f flooding, flooding, I think is the word, around in my body, not being able to get to the organs, so they would fail as well. So yeah, I spent, I don't know, maybe half a day there. I wasn't really there. They gave me, um, we call it dippy, I don't know if you have it, but it's like, a real good painkiller. <laughs> it's like the, <laughs> the, uh, pink cloud painkiller where you don't know anything and it was such a relief after days of such a pain in my body it would finally stop so I fell asleep I was asleep most of the time and then um, they had called the helicopter to take me to the big hospital because I know today that all the small hospitals try to when they know that you're a a case that's probably going to die, they send you to the big hospital because they don't have statistics about how many people die there. I know this today, didn't realize then how bad it was. Um, and the helicopter couldn't come because there was a transplant coming from another hospital that they had to pick up. So um, I remember the paramedic who was supposed to, because uh, of course a car was going to take me there. And... Um, <laughs> The paramedic looked at me and he said, I'm not taking her. She's going to die on the way. She's not going to make the way. And I heard him. And because he used a very strange word and I didn't understand, I started to laugh a bit and said, well, that's not the right joke to make right now. Don't you think? I, 
seriously, I didn't realize what was going on. So, of course, um, I was brought there in this in this ambulance, and um, it took I think forty five minutes. And during these forty five minutes, I did exactly how I was told. <laughs> <laughs> my heart would stop and of course they did um, the reanimation right away I was gone for about I think the first time was four minutes but it was it was happening already uh, in the entrance of the hospital so they would take me to ICU directly and um, arriving there um, my heart stopped the second time and during the first time, I remember that I was, everything was black and I was just so full of peace compared to all the fighting before, all the not realizing what was happening, all this being so helpless and so, so unable to change anything, um, from this surrendering to the moment saying okay i'm just going to i'm just going to sleep because that's the only thing i can do um from this from this state on going to well okay this is new <laughs> there's no pain there's no wanting there's just surrendering to this moment is all that's happening I remember that everything around me was black and I remember that I was standing in front of a curtain that was grey and it was drifting around me and waving in some kind of wind and I knew that if I would take this curtain and if I was gonna cross this curtain then it will be over, then everything would be perfect. <laughs> I don't have a better word than that, and I know this it freaks me out um because I would love um to have better adjectives, but it's really hard to convey these feelings into words, and um <laughs> this is all I can do, so I knew that everything that would come from that moment on when I passed this curtain that everything would be so peaceful and so easy and I would go home. I knew that I was going to go home if I did that. So there was just w one question in my head saying have I, have I finished? Am I done with everything? And my clear answer the first time was no. I haven't finished. I need to go back. I I haven't I haven't lived my life. <sighs> That's what was in my mind. And then I came back. And the second time. Because I mean the moment. <laughs> Describing this feeling was that was peaceful, but coming back and somebody just jumping on your chest, hurting, that really hurts. <laughs> that wasn't peaceful at all. It was loud and noisy and people talking to you and you're just like, God, for God's sake, leave me alone. But, yeah. But they, they took me, they brought me back. And the second time, I had this question in my head again and my answer was not so clear because I think some parts of my soul thought that just letting go, just going back to where I come from, it couldn't be as hard as this life. <laughs> this life is so exciting and so exhausting. <laughs> This life makes us have an ego, be our small version, getting hurt, trying to be vulnerable, trying to be successful, trying to find out what the world around us wants us to be. 
This is exhausting. Dying is easy. Being dead is easy. So yeah. And what came then was 24 hours of dialysis, which was painful because they have to give you an intravenous line into your throat, um, going down, pushing down to your left heart chamber, which is exhausting because you have to help pressing um, this kind of catheter is called Sheldon Cathedral and <laughs> you, you get, um, I mean your blood needs to be washed because your kidneys apparently can't do it anymore so yeah, your blood has to be washed and they do it through this and what came after this was, um, yeah, me fighting back into life, still thinking that you need to fight to survive and that is where many of my points go back to many of my beliefs go back to those beliefs that made me really sick was that life is some kind of battlefield where you just have to find out how to be safe who to be to be liked to be loved to be safe and this is something that i've been working on for a few years now to let this all go and find who I am under these masks and under these roles that we all play and under these this pain and this being hurt and this being wrong and not trying to have people close to me even noticing that I'm trying to not let people come close to me. And this is the journey I want to take you on, if you want to join me. <laughs> so, I also uh, promised you to give um, some advice on what to do before you die. Because if I realized one thing, then it is that life is short. <laughs> uh, you don't have to catch a disease to die. I mean, you could be just run over by a bus tomorrow on the street, so... <laughs> I'm not scared of dying anymore and I hope that you can find some inspiration um, by really asking yourself the question that I'm, I, that kind of decides how I go through every day and it's like my, my northern light. <laughs> um, if I'd be leaving today, have I lived this day to the fullest? Have I told everyone how much I love them? And in um, it's this is something that we don't do. Um, <laughs> if you come from an average German family, this is something we don't do. Um, at least in my family, it's not. It's not usual to do it. So, um, if you have problems, like if, if your if your relationship with your family members is not like this, that you tell each other that you love each other, then you can just write letters. Write letters to every single person in your life that you love or that you want to be aware of something that you can't say. Write letters. Put them somewhere. Where um, tell one person that in case you're going to die, to please spread these letters to the people so you can go in peace and they can be in peace. And I'm not asking you to write me letters or I always wanted to tell you that letters. <laughs> Just open your heart and write from your heart because under all this pain, under this being hurt by your parents, by your siblings, by the world. Under this is so much love and you will want those people to know how much you love them despite everything. So this is the biggest advice I can give you <laughs> on how to prepare for dying. <laughs> um, another thing that I like to do is practicing forgiveness because we all have reasons to be angry. 
every single one of us has reasons to be angry because of what people did to us. And you decide to carry this pain with you whenever you decide not to forgive. Not forgiving means mixing a cocktail of poison for another person every day and then drinking it yourself. This is not forgiving. Because it's going to affect nobody but you if you don't forgive. Nobody's going to be angry about this but you. And you always have the choice to forgive people. I know this is a rough catch, but it's one of the most most impressive tools, I think, to really give you peace and really free yourself from your story. Because whenever you tell yourself the reasons, the story, why you can't forgive, why you're not able um, to be okay with something, then it's the active decision to fight against what was, what was happening to you. It's not going to change your past. It's only going to change your future to the worse. So if you want to make a list of people that you haven't forgiven, tell yourself one last time why you can't forgive them, why, how you feel in your mind. I mean, <laughs> or, or write a letter or tell them. Perfect, if you can do that. Tell the story one last time. And then let it go. Let it go because by doing this, you make the decision to not let it affect you anymore. To not keep you back from being your biggest version, from being your most open-hearted version, from really loving people. Decide that you're done with this story because it's going to give you so much energy. There's so much energy blocked in these angry feelings, in these suppressed emotions, in this tightness. <laughs> it can come as shoulder ache, it can come as migraines, it can come as pains in your whole body. Anger is such a huge emotion that if we carry it with us and we don't live it, but we just drag it with us, This is going to... I mean, it can even make your liver fail. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I think I just crossed 26 minutes. I'm... Um, I, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Why would I say I'm sorry? <laughs> I wasted your time. No, I didn't. Look, I mean, this is in all of us. We all have this, this moment of... Um, was this wrong? Did I just waste someone's time did they expect me to use that much time of their most precious resource they have which is time <laughs> i don't want to say sorry because i really hope you enjoyed this episode i really hope i could inspire you on valuing your life valuing every day appreciating what you have appreciate every single breath and decide today that you don't need a disease like this to make you appreciate what you have. <laughs> okay, so I will say goodbye now. I will let you off into your day or into your night or into your morning. Um, I hope to meet you on Instagram because I love your reviews on my podcast. I love your feedbacks, your comments. Just keep on commenting it. I like it. And if you have any ideas or any um, topics that you would like me to cover, please just let me know. Um, share this episode with someone. If you know someone who's really scared of dying or um, afraid of death, just share this episode because I think... We all need to make peace with death. It makes you ah, such a bigger person. It takes away this fear. It gives you peace with life. <laughs> so just join me on Instagram. Svenja Strohmeier is my name there. Um, subscribe to this podcast if you haven't yet. 
Um, I'm really, really happy to share my thoughts and my story with you. And I'll be talking to you soon. So you take care. Have the best day of your life. And yeah, see you soon. Bye. Sonos macht es dir leicht, ein perfektes Soundsystem für all deine Lieblingsinhalte zu erstellen. Kombiniere mehrere Speaker und erlebe Sound in deinem gesamten Zuhause und draußen. Besuche sonos.com und leg los.